Hi, this is Kier from Shopify. Today we're going to have a look at the product.liquid template. Okay, I'm just going to grab my theme and drop it onto Sublime Text 2. Open up the templates folder and double click on product.liquid. And here it is. As you can see, it's uh, quite a small template in many ways, but it doesn't have to be. There's a lot more information we could add relating to our products into this. And I'll show you some options during this screencast. But let's have a quick look at what we're actually doing here. Okay, so at the very top in our H2, we're adding in the product.title. Now, product is the variable that we have access to within this particular template. That's all the information relating to the product that we're currently viewing. And obviously, depending on the product, the information will vary. Now, in order to find out what uh, variables we have access to through the product uh, sort of variable, the best place to go to is the uh, Shopify documentation and have a look at the product variables itself. Now, in order to access this, all you need to do is go to product down here under the liquid variables and uh, you'll start to see all the different ones we have access to. So let's have a look at a couple just to start with. So using the dot syntax, we have access to a whole bunch of stuff. So in this case, product.available. Now, uh, simply put, that will allow us to check whether the product uh, is in stock, for example. So if product.available equals true, we can uh, show information about it. If not, we could say, I'm sorry, the, um, uh, the, the product is sold out. Uh, we have access to a collection here called product.collections. Now we could loop over that and then we could uh, output all the different collections that particular product related to. Uh, and so we have uh, a whole bunch more. We've got things to do with pricing, uh, we've got things to do with um, uh, content and description. Uh, the featured image is a really useful one and it gives you a code snippet here. This returns the file name with a relative path of the featured image. The featured image is always the first one uh, in the row of images within your admin screen and obviously you can uh, move those around if you have more than one so the, uh, the first one will always be the featured. Uh, there's a whole bunch like you can grab the handle if you want to use that for a particular class name in this instance they've got product dash and then we're outputting the product handle that's actually quite useful IDs and so forth another one that we'll have a quick look at today is product.images um, it's very very common to feature more than one image for a particular product and we have access to the images collection for the product and this allows us to loop over all the associated images and output those into our template okay so let's go back to our template just now and have a look what we're actually doing. So here we are, we've got product.title and that's obviously going to output the name of the title. If you think of our store, the Shopify for Designers demo store, we've got the, the coffee grinder and the edible coffee cup, so that's where that would be uh, injected into. We've got the product.description. Now you notice that there's no uh, HTML around that and that's because the WYSIWYG editor, uh, I always find that hard to say, the WYSIWYG editor injects the, uh, the P tags and, and so forth for us there. So we're actually using the featured image uh, variable here and we're filtering that through with the product image URL filter and requesting the medium size. Now if you're not sure of all the different namings for different sizes, the best place to look is Mark Dunkley's cheat sheet, uh, which is cheat.markdunkley.com and you'll find all the different sizes down on the left hand side there. It's a really good reference point. Uh, we're also using the title and the escape filter. Uh, the liquid escape filter there to you fill in the alt attribute. We've then got our cart and uh, we're uh, using the uh, variants uh, here in a, in a select list. Uh, the one thing I would say about the cart is make sure that you have the action set to slash cart slash add. This is the one place that uh, you can add products to your cart from uh, using this particular URL. You, you don't want to change this as it simply won't work. Uh, the other thing worth noting as well is regardless of whether you use a select list or um, uh, uh, some other kind of form input, you must name it ID so that it adds the right variant to your cart. Uh, moving on, we've got uh, a for loop here. Now this allows us to go over a collection. In this case, it's the variants collection. Uh, if you've watched one of our screencasts before, you'll notice that variants are variations on a particular product. So think of colours for t-shirts and sizes for t-shirts, or maybe for mugs it might be uh, the logo on the mug, or the colour or the size, that kind of thing as well. So we're basically saying for every variant that the product has, we want to go over each one in turn. Uh, but before we output any information relating to it, we do a quick check here. We're actually saying if the variant is available using the uh, variant uh, 
variable, <laughs> uh, if variant dot available equals true, then we output our option value and uh, the title and so forth. Uh, don't forget that we have to close our end if and our end for and our select element here. And then the final piece of the puzzle is a submit button. This will post the form to the URL that we've specified in our form action and uh, all being well we'll add it to our cart. So there's a few things uh, worth noting there. One is that we have access to the product and one is that we have access to the collection of product variants and in order to access those we use the liquid logic uh, for loop. So um, we use for variant in product dot variants. Now variant here could be called anything you want it's just a sort of container variable that we use during our loop. Uh, variants an obvious one to use and it makes things nice and clear but uh, it's just something that we can access each time we go over that loop. So that's the uh, template that we have currently and as you can see it's very very simple. This is our coffee grinder and it outputs our black and our chrome and if we add to cart there it will go through and uh, we've actually already got one so let's just uh, remove that from the cart uh, and uh, we'll add it to the cart and we could go and check out. Now what if we wanted to embellish that a little bit more? Well there's a couple of things we could do and I'll just show you how to do those. The first one is we might want to show how many uh, particular items or, or variants are available. Now each variant has uh, data associated to it and again just using Mark's cheat sheet here we can uh, scroll down and we can see all the different variables we have access to for variants. Now let's have a look. Uh, inventory quantity, I think that's the one we want. Okay, so let's go back and uh, in our option value here, uh, just show you where I'm going to put that. So in this particular drop down, I want to add in how many are left. Okay, so whilst in the cheat sheet it did say variant dot uh, quant uh, was it quantity underscore available? Let me just double check on that. Inventory quantity. I'm just going to copy that for my own sanity. There we go. Um, and I'm just going to paste that down the bottom just so I've got a reference to it. As I said, whilst it was say variant dot inventory underscore quantity here, we've also got variant here, but again, uh, if we used a different container variable here, we would just substitute variant for that. So if this was for options, we would write if option dot available, uh, option dot title, and so forth. But we're using variant just to keep things simple. So I'm just going to open a bracket here. And I'm going to put, uh, let's see, let's do it like this. Let's do variant dot inventory underscore quantity. Yep. And then I'm going to close that. So that's a liquid output. So that's going to inject a number there. I'm just going to write left. So what I'm trying to achieve here is just to show you how many left we have in stock. I'm just going to save that and go back and refresh and now you can see that uh, each one has got 10 left. Oh I didn't close the bracket so let me just go in and do that there just for completeness. There we go. So that's a really simple way of just showing how much inventory for each particular variant we have left in our store. Uh, what else could we do? Well, the other thing I wanted to show you was uh, to do with images. Now, at the moment, we're just outputting the main featured image. If I just go back to the screen here, you can see that this is the coffee grinder. But what if we had more than one image? Well, it's actually really easy to do. So I'm just going to delete that. And I'm just going to grab some code that I've already written and make some space here and paste it in. All right, it does help if you actually copy it. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Right, I'm just going to add in a comment so I know uh, what this particular area is for. Output, output product images. And then I'll explain what's happening. Okay, so the end result that I'd like to achieve here is to show uh, the first picture that we output, the first photo, uh, in the size of medium, and then all the other ones that we have access to for this particular product as a smaller version. Obviously, to take that further in code, we could uh, use JavaScript so that when we clicked on the smaller one, it would replace the bigger one and so forth. And that way, what will happen is uh, we can give people a better overview of each of our products. So one of the variables we have access to in the product template is uh, a collection called images. 
and uh, using the dot syntax we can ask the question how big is that collection how many images are within the collection so all we're doing here is using some liquid logic and we're saying if product.images.size is greater than zero i.e. the product has images associated to it then let's loop over them and output them so that the uh, potential customer can see all the different images we have okay so we use the for loop and we say for image and this is our container variable here for each loop in product.images and then we ask another question we're also saying if for loop dot first in other words is it the first time that we're going over this particular collection and if so then what we want to do is use the product uh, grab the image uh, this is our container variable and filter it with the product image URL and medium that's the, the slightly bigger one well it's certainly bigger than small but it's not the biggest one we could use uh, and we create an image uh, element out of those variables if it isn't the first one we do exactly the same thing but we just request the small version so let's say there were three images associated with our product the first time we'd output the medium one and then on the second loop when we ask the question is for loop dot first which would obviously not be true uh, we then output the smaller one we've got a few things to close off here which is why I've used the indentation just to show you uh, first of all we must close off our end if which is to do with our for loop dot first we then must close off our end for which is for looping over the product images collection and then finally we must close off our end if for asking the question if the uh, images collection has images in other words images dot size is greater than zero okay so I'm just going to save that out and go back and let's have a look okay so our coffee grinder only has one image associated to it which is why we've only got the big one but I know there are products in here that have more so let me scroll down to one and I believe the mustache mug does and here we go so our first image this stack of six mustache related mugs <laughs> um, is there and then we're followed by the two other images that are associated with that product now if I go <coughs> to the store admin just waiting for that to log in and I go to products and I go to my mustache mug and I want to make uh, this particular image the featured one I'll just drag that to the beginning and then if I go back and view in the store you'll notice that the images have changed around and this is now the big image at the beginning so there you go that's a couple of ideas for things that you might want to add into your product.liquid template there's a lot more you can do especially around pricing uh, and um, also things to do with weights and all that kind of stuff great place to look is the uh, documentation which is docs.shopify.com slash themes and if you scroll down on the right hand side to product.liquid you'll uh, have access to uh, links that will show you all the different sort of global variables and cart variables that you have access to from within that template but also the individual product uh, variables that you have access to that we looked at earlier on don't forget that if you're looping over products you'll have access to the variant information for each variant to do with that product you'll also have access to collections relating to images uh, and that kind of thing so it's a really uh, in-depth template in many ways this access to lots and lots of information um, but it can be quite simple as well hopefully uh, that's found um, to be useful for you and just don't forget that um, this is the page where people can add products to your cart so make sure that you use the action equals slash cart slash add uh, as your form action okay um, if you have any questions uh, feel free to contact me my email address is kia that's k-e-i-r at shopify.com or you can find me on twitter where my username is at kia Whitaker. thanks a lot for listening